my name's Warwick Cox. I, um, I work at Expedia while with Chris. And he's my manager, actually, so I better do well. He might have promote me. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the console API, which a lot of us probably uh, are aware of, but uh, we might not use it correctly, I guess. We could probably use it better. So uh, just firstly, can I get a raise of the hand? Just give us a wave. Who uses Chrome to, to do the developing it? That's probably most of us, yeah? What about Firefox? Yeah, a few. And with Firefox, who uses the Fire button? Yeah, a couple, yeah? Righto, what about IE? <laughs> Did somebody wave up the back? Oh, good. So no one uses IE. There you go. Um, there's a few little uh, tricks with console. When I first started learning JavaScript, the, uh, the guy that was to, like, helping, me, uh, helping me learn said, console log is gonna be your best friend. You wanna use it for everything. You wanna, you know, you're probably gonna use it more times than you use any, any, other, any other function. So, uh, so in Sublime, there's a little cheat. Instead of typing console log out, because you probably spend about, I know, three hours a day, or well, not three hours a day, probably three hours a, a month typing the word console log. So a little, uh, a little cheat is in Sublime, you might use a different uh, IDE, but in Sublime, I use command shift L, and that means I don't have to type it. So one of those tiny little hints, and we might all do that already, but one of those tiny little things, it just saves a lot of time, especially when you're developing and you want to develop fast. So uh, another little thing with console log is we're probably all in this situation where we've left console log in and it's gone to prod and our boss is like, dude, come on, you just let something go to prod. And I don't know about you guys, but I tend to console log the way I'm feeling at the time. So my console logs are, why the, aren't you working? And then just, and that goes in. So if that obviously goes to production, then not the best thing. So you might not, I think uh, the other day we found one in production that was just boom. So someone just left that in there, so, <laughs> so <laughs> went for there. Um, there are obviously, uh, with the test-driven uh, development, you, uh, you can obviously write tests to overcome that situation, which is good. So I'm gonna smash this console API. I'm gonna try to do this in about 10 minutes. So bear with me, it's gonna be pretty fast. So the first one is console clear. So we probably all had a console like this, and uh, which is full of stuff, and every time you go into it, you wanna see your console log and you refresh the page, then you're looking down and you can't find you can't find your console or you're scrolling around. So, uh, all right, as another example, you've got lots of console logs actually in the page already. So, I write this little function, rice bubbles, a number of snap, crackle, and pops. Um, every time that goes through, obviously you're clearing the console, and with this, you just want to log out the last event that happens. This is obviously a pretty poor example. I'm pretty sure we could write better functions than this, but I like rice bubbles. So, I thought I'd go with this one. The, uh, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna say console clear and then snap three, because that was the last thing in the array. So, nice little tip there. Next one is count. So, with this you just put a label in. So, it's gonna count the number of times that that specific label has been, oh, been console logged out, so, or console out. So, with the serial box click, every time, you've, uh, every time that serial box has been clicked, then you're just gonna get that in the console. Which is kinda handy, you probably might, might, not gonna do it for a quick event, but if you're deving and you're doing it for something else, we're imaginative people, I'm sure we can think of a way to use that. The next one is dir, or dir. So with this, this, cons this uh, logs out the JavaScript object. So normally if you write console log, then it's just gonna put out the XML or the HTML. So we wanna put, we don't wanna spit out the JavaScript object. So with that, that's what it's gonna look like, which is pretty simple. Because we, we tend to wanna run through the DOM like that sometimes. The other one is dir XML, which does the complete opposite which prints out the HTML, the XML. So what, that, what that's gonna do is that. Make sense? Cool. This one, uh, the console error and console warn. You can just put a string in there, but you obviously can put an object or multiple objects, and they, are, and they all work together. So with this, say we called our rice bubbles, and if you remember the function from before, rice bubbles actually wanted snap crackle as well as the array pops. So we've just put the array pops in here, so we're probably gonna get an error. So you're gonna try and catch this, and then that's what's gonna turn out. So you've got the red one, which is the error, and then you've got the warning, which is the uh, little triangle yellow thing, and that gives you the information as well. You can also see it up the top right hand corner, just up here, which might be handy if you put, the, uh, put them in all, the, all your catches, just the console log out while you're developing. Next one is, uh, this is quite handy in, if you've got a lot of consoles going on. So console group, so you want to group all your things together so they don't just all get sparse all over the page. Then say you've got a serial and then your snaps, your crackles and your pops and you console that out. That's going to look like that when you group it together. So, but if we wanted to, sorry, if we uh, group them all together and there's a lot more than two in each group, 
then it's just going to stamp your page and it might look pretty disgusting or you know not, not look disgusting I guess but you might just take up a fair bit of space and you're going to have to scroll through it or you know close them all so you can just use group collapsed and that'll just create the group but actually make it collapsed to start off with so then whoops then that just looks like that but we're probably all thinking pop and crackle probably shouldn't be in the in snaps they're not the children of snaps if, if they're anyone's with me right crap you look all confused. <laughs> <laughs> Too many cracks and snapples and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so we need to end the group so it works out well. So the first one is we're gonna end that and then end it here, as you can see. And then the last one and then end the, uh, the serial group right at the end there. And then that will print out a little bit nicer. This one, profiling, yeah, when, you've, when you're obviously developing you wanna work out how much memory the, uh, the functions running or the, the scripts running. Profile and profile end are really, really helpful. So this one's just a really simple version, but I'm sure we could use this in a really complex manner, especially in our workplaces. So with the profile, we're heading up, starting up a profile called serials, and then the rice bubbles and the profile end. In the console log, that, in the console, that's what it's gonna look like. But what you actually wanna look at is the profile tab, and the profile tab will show you all this which is helpful information. So you can see how long this has been running for. So it took 12.4 milliseconds to run the function, which is pretty good. And that's pretty handy as you are, as you got a lot of things going on, especially when you're profiling. The one that sort of, I don't know, helps that uh, is the time. So what that does is it uses the, instead of the profile tab, it uses the timeline tab. So the timeline tab, so you get the time end, uh, time and then time end, and then that'll go in the timeline tab see down here then you can see where your functions are running in the specific timeline on the page cool it's going pretty well actually five minute warning might slow down talk a little bit slower everyone might understand me this one's pretty cool the uh console table i didn't actually know about this for about i don't know probably found out about it like a few months ago and uh you can chuck an object in there but it's instead of when you're consoling when you're logging out stuff it all comes with the, uh, spits out like JSON. So you gotta go through each layer of the JSON. But sometimes you just wanna find out, say you've got a massive JSON or JSON, and one of the things you wanna find is the user ID and then the user payment. And that's the only two things you want. You don't really care about the rest. You can use it as a table to actually print that out. So it just prints it out like an SQL table, which is a little bit easier to read, a little bit easier on the eye, especially if you only want a few, few things printed out. Then, the one that'll got you with that is if the if you've got an array and you've got an object in that array, then it'll just print out object. So just be aware of that. It's not going to print out another table in that table because that'll just be be crazy. Uh, like I was saying before, you can print out exactly what you want. So cereal and sugar instead of what have we got? Cereal, sugar, and color. So we're just missing out on the color one. So we just use cereal and sugar, and then we can just see exactly what we want, like the username and the uh, payment details. Now, uh, console log, here's the hero. We all use this thing as much as we possibly can. Console log is pretty powerful and it does a lot of the, other, a lot of the things that the other ones do, uh, but it's obviously like the jack of all trades. So we normally use it like this. Pretty simple, just printing out a string. I think Chris, when he showed us his code, there was console log and there was just a string in there because we mostly use it like that. I'm sure we all do. And that would be, I love my serial. But there's a few things, a few little tips that you can actually use for console. And the little types on the, uh, the right hand, on the left hand side there, with the percentage sign and then the letter, that actually can designate certain things. So you can, yeah, you put me off with that 10 minute warning. That's all right. Um, yeah, so you can edit the console the way you want. So you can do this, which is a string and then a digit, and then the serial name, and then the, the pop number. So that'll come out. Rice bubbles has 123 pops in them. So. It's a lot simpler like that. So you can use variables in there. The other one is an object. So the first one, the little, uh, the O, is for a XML object, and the second one is for a JavaScript object. So the XML, and the second one is an, yeah, a JavaScript object. Now we've, uh, we've probably all opened up the Facebook console and seen this thing. And if you haven't, you probably, you should give it a crack. Uh, when I first saw this, I saw, I was thinking, how did they, make that colorful, that's that's pretty cool. Like it'd be pretty cool to put that in your website. If someone goes in the console, you'd be like, stop trying to hack me. Uh, so I decided to do one myself today, and, uh, and that's how easy it is. It's not very hard at all. 
the, the code for that is that you basically just use the CSS to do it. So you can put anything in the console and then just use the uh, percentage C, as you can see here. Couple of them just here, percentage C, <laughs> and that will yeah put all the colors. So it's pretty simple, and it uses most of the CSS that you can use in a browser. Uh, I tried using padding and, uh, and margin, and that didn't really work too well. So yeah. So there you go. That's the console API. Now uh, I'll just quickly highlight. These are the ones we went through. <coughs> these are the resources, and now I'll probably give these uh, this presentation to you so you can chuck it up, so you can have a look at the resources. I must say that even though no one develops in uh, IE, IE resources are probably the best out of all the resources. And IE 11 actually uses all these. I develop in Chrome. I probably wouldn't develop in IE, but IE 11 has got a lot of resources and it does all these things. Um, Firefox does. The Firefox with Firebud does all these, Chrome does all these, but Firefox, the native uh, native console, has a few missing. So just make sure that when you're trying to use them in your, in your browser, just be aware of what works and what doesn't work. So in the end, go home and just try it out, see what you think, and uh, try to use it properly. We all know this uh, We all know this tool, if we can use it properly, that'll make, might make life a little bit easier. So uh, yeah, that's it, I'm Warwick Cox, done.